Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 185, I think, of the Speared Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and this is a very special episode, guys. I'm in my bedroom because the uh, Speared Sunday set And by set, what I mean is uh, a fucking casting couch in front of a warehouse wall and a fire hydrant is being renovated uh, and we're actually turning it into a set. We're going to create something fucking amazing and that's going to be coming out next week. And I can already, right, what we've done, if you want to see it, by the way, I've put it all up on Patreon, the finished product, and people are... Uh, absolutely amazed. Like, I would say, you know, all of my content... uh, except for Speared Sundays, has been gradually getting better, you know? Like Lou Review, it was started uh, just in my bedroom, and then I started doing it in front of a shelf, and then I started lighting it better so it looked better, and then I started colour grading, and I upgraded the camera, and it got better and better, bi-monthly bull. Originally it was, you know, just this in front of my desk, and then we added in green screen, and then we added lighting and graphics, and it got better and better very, very gradually, though, so not many people really noticed it. Spearhead Sundays, however, has been... Uh, recorded in a bin f- since its in- since its inception, it has looked like shit. It is it has been the most unprofessional, garbage looking podcast on YouTube, and it has just not been improving at all, right? And I just got to this point where you know what, I can't have four hundred thousand subscribers and the worst looking podcast on the internet, you know? Like, I literally have been using this camera that I could only afford with my fucking call center wage since I bought it. Like, years and years and years. It's a wonder that this thing still fucking works. I treat it with so little respect. So I thought, you know, Speared Sundays is in desperate need of a fucking upgrade. So what we've done is we've got a whole set. We've got a big printed backdrop. I'm not going to ruin it for you. You guys will see. That'll be coming out next week. And I can already see the fucking comments. We liked it better when it was shit. Why does it look good? We want it to be shit. We hate change. Yeah, well, I guess you support fucking AIDS then, huh? You like AIDS? Oh, we like poverty. We don't want to fix poverty. We like it that it's shit. Why are we going to save all those Africans living in their fucking sheds with AIDS? What do they need mosquito nets for? We like bad things. What, you like the Holocaust too? Because that's what this podcast looks like right now. The fucking Holocaust. It's an incredibly emaciated man screaming for help (laughs) in a small room. But... If, you are, if you're not a fucking loser who appreciates a little bit of fucking, just a little bit of professionalism, you guys are going to be stoked with the set. I love it. I think it's really, really cool. And I think it's going to look great on feeds. Because I just realized that, like, I think this podcast is really good, uh, but I think it could be so much bigger. And the reason that it's not bigger is because people look at it and they go, oh, that looks shit. And you know what? They're kind of right. They have a little bit of a point there. But also, uh, the, I feel like the content is funny. It just looks garbage. It's like the opposite of a really beautiful woman. Like, looks beautiful, but the what's inside is rubbish. <laughs> uh, that's, what, that's what this podcast is. It's the opposite of an incredibly beautiful woman. It looks like garbage, but if you get to know her, there's gold on the inside. As opposed to looking at the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, going up to talking to her and realizing, oh, you're a cunt. Because why would you ever have to be nice to anyone? Look at what you look like. You have to be an asshole. That's why as much as, as much as I make fun of beautiful women, I totally get it, right? Because you can't be a, a beautiful woman and nice all the time, right? You have to like really reserve your niceness because chicks, I talk to a chick, right, where, where I, I know now because I'm older and also I have a girl, right? I'm not looking to fall in love with anyone, but I talked to her and I was like, oh, 17 year old me would have fallen in love with you and thought you liked me. Because of your demeanor. You know those girls that just have fall in love with me demeanor? Like those chicks? And and, and they're victims, you know? They're victims of their own niceness. They never learn how to be a cunt. 
they just they just grew up and they were really nice and they had beautiful faces and personalities and all they got from being an, an amazingly good looking person and a nice bitch was just baiters falling in love with them, just orbiting them, thinking that it's re- reciprocal when really they're just being nice and like, haha, I don't, I'm not interested in you in the slightest, but I'm also a nice person, so I don't know what to do. I'm just not very assertive. You know, it's like, that's like, man, I think this girl really likes me. I think she's falling in love with me. I've fallen in love with her within three days, and I think she really likes me. It's like, nah, bro, she just never learned to be assertive. She thinks you're gross, <laughs> but she would never say that. You know those chicks? Yeah, yeah, hi, yeah. Oh, wow, really? Like those expressive, like so emotional, emotionally happy women. It just has all of these fucking prepubescent kids just fall in love with them. And then dudes that never grew up into men. Like, man, she was, she smiled at me when we were talking. We must be in love. You know what those chicks are? They're like 80-year-old women. They don't realize it yet. They're like 80-year-old women. You know when you see like an 80-year-old woman? Like some of them some of them don't get to this point. It's like an 80-year-old woman who never like went through the ringer of life. You know those rare women that like they just get to 80 and, and they're like happy and they're like, man, this is great. I'm stoked to be here. I lived a great life. And everyone else is like, what? How the fuck did you do that shit? It's like, it's like, that's like they did a, it's like they did um. They completed a Mario game without getting hit by a goomba and going, oh, fuck! You know? It's like, man, this Mario game's awesome. It's like they, they didn't find that really hard level that difficult. They were like, oh, you know, you're just going to jump here and jump there. They don't even realize they fluked it, whereas everybody else got stuck on level nine. It's like, oh, fuck, shit! This game sucks! I don't know why I'm playing it! But they have to finish it. It's like those people never experience the hard level, so they get to the end of the game and they're like, man, the game was so sick. This is awesome. I'm just going to be nice and happy to, and friendly to everyone. So what I'm saying is, guys, if you complain about all the fucking effort I've put in to make Spearhead Sundays look like something that's actually watchable, fuck you. I showed a picture to Luke and he was like, man, that looks so good. That looks incredible. That's going to look so good on people's screens. And a lot of your fans are going to are going to hate it. <laughs> because they like that it's shit. Now don't worry, all right? I'm upgrading the set, yeah? I'm not I'm not doing I'm not doing fucking intro music. I'm not doing fucking sound effects. I'm not doing like a like a big song and dance. The is what it's going to be, all right? I'm turning from I'm I'm completely flipping this operation around, right? I'm going from an ugly chick with a beautiful soul to a beautiful girl full of rubbish. It's still going to be the same shit, right? As much professionalism as I'm adding into the into the aesthetic of the show, how it looks, right? It's still going to be the same fucking podcast, right? It's still going to be me screaming. Right? Don't be fooled, yeah? I might have a nice background, but it's still going to be me yelling about the Apple store in a fucking warehouse surrounded by drills and murderers. So stay tuned for that. Next episode's going to be great. If you want to see uh, a preview of it and uh, you want to get the next episode early as well, support me on Patreon because that's how I can afford all this stuff. We've uh, I'll, I'll run you through the set when I'm actually in front of it, but if you want a sneak peek, um, you can check that out there and also big shout out to all of the patreon supporters um i've been like uh putting in images into the discord uh telling people what to i've been putting images in the into the discord asking oh should i get this or that or should it be red or should it be yellow and uh, they've had a big input on the set so hey if you don't like it blame those cunts (laughs) all right what's been happening here um well, that's what I wanted to do. So if you're, if you're new to the podcast, uh, what I like to do every single year at the start of the year, I, I am a sucker for New Year's resolutions. I fucking love them. If, if, sorry, 
Sorry, if, big if, massive if, large capital IF, if you actually fucking do them. If you're the type of cunt that sits down and goes, I'm going to do my New Year's resolution. I'm going to go to gym five days a week. You go on January 1st and then never again. Suck my dick. All right? This isn't for quitters, okay? This is for real ones. This is for the real boys and the girls as well. Right? I take this shit fucking seriously. This is New Year's resolution. And it's not, right? It's not to be like, oh, New Year, new me. New Year, new me. No, it's to hold yourself fucking accountable for what you achieved last year and setting goals to achieve for the next year achievable shit not i'm gonna become a fucking black belt and win the ufc in a year because i'm good at playing mortal Kombat. fuck you achievable shit actually i take that back slightly unachievable goals so that you can get 70 percent of the way there and be like bro didn't get all the way there but fuck yeah you don't want achievable shit like oh i want to i want to eat less burgers fuck you shit goal Unless you're 350 kilos. In which case, good luck, you fat fuck. Can you, you, have you noticed how much more comfortable I am at home? When I'm, when I'm not fucking surrounded by cunts drilling. Right? I'm, instead, I'm surrounded by mum folding washing. And she, oh, Lewis is doing the podcast again. Because he's going, fuck you, fat cunt. I'll keep my folding <laughs> quiet. These fucking... Oh, one day we'll get out of that warehouse. Maybe this year. Anyway, right? So what I like to do every year is I go over uh, the goals that I set for last year and I read over the goals that I set for this year and I really like doing it and I encourage you guys to do it. I always keep my goals because a lot of people, they set their goals and then they just fucking forget about them. I don't do that. I keep it in a notepad that I carry with me all day. It's got all my stand up in it and the page one is the goals for 2019. Actually, page one is what no slide season was going to be like. No slide season. A complete show experience. Dark, deeper crowd work, different and shocking, tight and polished, loud, ranty and hilarious. And I think I did that. I've, I've also written sex. Yeah, I did have 15 minutes on fucking. So, you know, good on me. I nailed the, nailed the, uh, the mood board for my show. Anyway, so here are the goals that I set for 2019. I'm going to keep some of these a secret. No, I can read all of these. Cool. So my first goal was to hit 500,000 subscribers and uh, I was sitting at 200. So I like setting slightly unachievable goals that could happen if it was miraculous. But if you got close, fucking oath. 500,000 subscribers, I got to 404,000. So that's pretty fucking good. You see what I mean? Like I got 70% of the way there. All right. And all you cunts doing the math in the comments says, actually... It's not too many, hey, hey, fuck you, all right? It's the thought, right? That's what I'm trying to achieve, okay? 404,000, pretty fucking close. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm not giving it a tick, right? Because I'm, I'm not a narcissist. Yeah, I'm not a fucking loser, right? Oh, close enough. Tick, you didn't earn that tick, you fucking dork. I've just written, eh, pretty close. Uh, my next goal was to get 50,000 Instagram followers. Again, even closer, 44,000. Pretty fucking close. No tick, but pretty fucking close. I wanted to get 10,000 podcast downloads on Speared Sundays. 6,000. Not that close. 60% of the way there. Not that close. But hey, you know what? Wasn't very consistent with this, was I? And it looks like garbage. That's why it's not growing. That's why Luke and Lewis is growing, and this is not growing. Because Luke and Lewis looks amazing. That looks like something that you would want to listen to. Like, wow, they're putting effort into this. This is me, Speared Sundays. What the fuck is that? What does that look like? A bin? No thanks. I'll put my time into something that, that clearly the host wants me to watch. So hopefully I'll hit that this year. Um, where are we? Uh, 200,000. Uh, I wanted to hit 200,000 Facebook likes. Now, I got to 111. It didn't move all year. I'm not, I, and you know what? I'm not calling that a fail because I don't think that's me. I think that is Facebook. I think Facebook, the platform, let me down there. Facebook is fucking dead. 
and I'm no longer going to try on there. So fuck Facebook. I don't even care about that goal. So as you can see, guys, right? New Year's resolution, I'm getting a lot of pretty closes, but still, right, not a failure because I'm getting pretty close, yeah? This is good. Facebook was a failure, but I think that's more Facebook's failure, not mine. Now, we're getting into some fucking ticks. I wanted 5,000 Luke and Lewis downloads at every episode. We smashed that. Fuck yeah. Um, I'm gonna just going to read. I'm, I'm going to fuck off all these numbers. I'm just going to do the... Um, the interesting stuff. I wanted to go to America. I did that shit. I wanted to buy a car. I did not do that shit. I wanted to invest some money into shares. I did that. Was it a million dollars? No, right? It was a couple hundred bucks, but I fucking did that. So, great. I wanted to weigh 80 kilos. Failed! Uh, I wanted to upload weekly. Bro, I gave myself two ticks because I uploaded an average of two videos a week last year. So I double ticked that shit. I wanted to do bi-monthly ball properly. I No, I did, failed. I didn't do that shit. I wanted to be able to move out. Yes, I got that tick, right? Now, will I move out? No, okay? But if I wanted to, I probably could sneak that shit in, right? But I won't. So, you know but I'm able to. And I wanted to get ready for a... And that's a big tick. I'm fucking ready for that shit. So, you know, 2019, in terms of my resolutions, I'm calling that a big fucking win. Um, because not that many ticks. Actually, quite a few ticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of my goals here. I'm, re- I'm ticking some boring ones. I didn't want to read you. So that's pretty fucking good. Oh, and I wanted to sell an amount of tickets and I was I sold 400 less than the goal. So that's really good. Now, I'm not telling you the specific amount because I don't need cunts doing the math. Oh, if he sold this many and his tickets were this much, that means he saw, he has this much in his bank account. Hey, cunt, however much you think I made, it's a third of that. Ticket fees, venue, flights, accommodation, advertising, management fees. Oh, everything. Luggage. Anyway, but you know what? It's, uh, it was good. So uh, that's, that's what I'm proudest of. I had sold 400 less than the goal. And the goal was fucking a lot more than what I sold 2018. So I'm stoked with that. Great. So i'm calling it a win i think uh last year was like my most successful year so i'm very very happy with that now let's get into my 2020 goals i have fuck loads so i'm just going to read the the exciting ones um first goal and this is the number one thing that i'm fucking doing this year make and the i've got the title i've had the title for 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 years i had the title of death threats don't scare me two years before i did it and i got the title for the next one I'm not going to reveal it here, but make uh, the best show of your life. Top death threats don't scare me. And you know what? I think I'm well on my way to that shit. So we'll see. Sell this many tickets at the comedy festival. I'm doing Melbourne. I got an amount in mind. We shall see at the end of the year if I pass that. I want to release 12 stand-up clips. I want, right? And now this is my big goal. This is my big, I like setting a few borderline impossible goals, right? And last year it was 400,000 subscribers. That was my main borderline impossible goal. This year, my scary goal that I would love to fucking do that is possible, but if I don't get it, if I get close, still a huge win. I want to shoot for 800,000 subscribers. That's the fucking goal. I want to double again, right? I doubled last year. I'm starting off at a better position. I didn't. I don't have to set up any editors, any warehouse bullshit. I set all that up last year and got it all running. I'm not doing a gigantic tour like I did last year. I pretty much have the entire year to just pump out videos. I'm doubling again. That's the fucking goal. And you know what? If I only get to 500, 600, 700, whatever, still a huge win for me, right? So that's the goal. I want 100,000 on Instagram, right? Because let's be honest, my Instagram is abysmal. It's starting to make... When I look at my my fucking YouTube and I see 406, 7,000 people and I look at my Facebook, 115,000 people and then I look at my Instagram, 44,000 people, it makes me think, man, I must be fucking 
ugly because nobody wants to follow me on that fucking platform <laughs> and it's starting to get to my soul. So I need followers there just for my own self-esteem. Fuck. Um, I want to get... Uh, this is something you cunts can help with. I want 500 Patreon supporters. I think if, if I can hit that level, man... Shit, shit will change. We can move out of the warehouse. We can hire another person, get another Keelan in, get someone in like uh, five days a week and really, really fucking pump out all this shit. Um, with the Speared Sunnies podcast, I want to, I've revamped the set, but ideally, man, what I would love is is having a producer of the podcast, right? Not to do fancy bullshit, just to like edit in graphics as I'm talking about shit. So if, I, if I'm complaining about fucking... Um, uh, the Apple Store again, bam, big photo of the Apple Store pops up next to my head. Some videos that I want to talk about, they'll play. I, I, would love, I would love that shit. So 500 patrons would enable me to do that shit. And if you want to support me, hey, it's fucking six bucks a month. What are you? Huh? I deserve it. Huh? You, you know what? I should, be, I, should be one of the, I should be one of those cunts. Hey, I, I do so much for you. What have you done for me? Give me your fucking money. Buy a t-shirt or you're a cunt. I work so hard. I deserve my millions. Those cunts. Who, who did that? The fucking um, Ace family. Right? They took a break. And you know what? I sympathize with them with this, right? The Ace family, if you don't know, it's like imagine if the Kardashians had Down syndrome and instead of having a reality TV show, they put it on YouTube. It's like that. They're full-on mega multi-millionaires. They just do family vlog, traumatizing their children and raising them famous when really their children, I mean, unlikely, very unlikely knowing the parents, but one of their kids could have been the next scientist to cure cancer, but instead they have to be some fucking Instagram influencer selling tea because they're their mum has huge tits and film them growing up, right? That's all they can do now. Oh, uh, fuck. You know, I really wanted to be a rocket scientist, but I guess i got to post my twat on the gram because, my, because I'm following in my mother's footsteps and uh, against my will, I am too famous to live a normal life. Thanks, mum. I hope it was worth it. That shit. What am I saying? Oh, yeah, they took a break uh, over Christmas because they are a family, right? I understand that. They're like they they are a, they put everything on YouTube, but at the end of the day, they are a fucking family and they decided to stop uploading over like Christmas or something, uh, some kind of break, and everybody lost their shit. Going, "Oh, you need to upload. You said you were going to upload." It's like, "Fuck, cunt. Why do you want to watch a 6-year-old run around a mansion for?" If that's your biggest problem, uh, kill yourself. If you can't watch that shit, if you don't watch, if you if you get angry because you can't watch a toddler run around a mansion, your life sucks. Your life is bad. You need to move to a country, throw your phone in the river, and get some priorities reset. So anyway. Um, I can't remember what, why I went on that tangent. But the point is, guys, I want 500 Patreon supporters. Uh, I want to hit 10,000 uh, views an episode on Speared Sundays, and I think the new set's going to really help with that. Um, this is a big one for me that I really need to do, that I, that I started at the start of last year, and it really fell to the side. I need to prioritize writing. I'm so, I, I, I realize that I'm so fucking busy. I've never been this busy in my life, and writing really I let slip I stopped writing every day I used to write stand up every fucking day and I just hadn't for the last 6 months I once I once I did once I wrote no slide season and I perfected that I put effort into perfecting that but I wasn't writing new shit and it's because I'm doing all these fucking bullshit phone calls talking to designers management this that Luke and Lewis garbage all fucking all that shit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to honestly I think I'm going to wake up in the morning, turn my fucking phone off, go to the gym and then just write for at least an hour and then and then I'm not going to answer any fucking calls until 12, at least 12, probably one, right? If you need to call me before 12, fuck you, all right? I, I, I swear to God, phone calls are the bane of my existence. 
I was... See, do you know how shit this fucking set is? I was going to look at... Go through my call log, right? To fucking show you guys some of the calls I've been doing. But I just realized that, that this set of the podcast in my bedroom is so bad that I don't have a light. So instead, I just turned my fucking phone light on and pointed it at me. So excuse me while this garbage setup gets even worse as I take away the phone light. Look at that. Horrible. The only thing lit up is the left side of my forehead. Great. Let's have a look at some of the fucking calls I've been taking. Right? Luke. And don't get me wrong. Love Luke. And we we have to do these calls, right? Hour and a half on the fucking phone. When do you want to spend an hour and a half on the phone with anyone, right? And this was not a friendship call. This was a how the fuck do we hire another person call? What do we need to do for this year for Luke and Lewis? Do we need this kind of insurance? Are we going to do that? I'm talking to my accountant and he thinks we should do this. Boring, right? Could have spent that shit writing. Should have done that call at fucking 10 p.m. when it was inconvenient for Luke. <laughs> then I talked to a graphic designer. Then I talked to my girlfriend. Then I talked to Greeley because he just got out of prison. Congratulations, right? So many fucking unnecessary phone calls that I could be doing later. Instead, but instead, instead of uh, writing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to prioritize writing, right? So if you go to prison and you get out, right, and and all you want to do is talk to one of your friends. Fuck you, okay? Too too bad. I'm writing dick jokes, and that's my priority this year. Dick jokes over friends. Um, I want to. This is a big one for me, I, and I didn't write a number for this one. I'm not hiding the number. I did not write a number. I want to sell tickets overseas. If I can honestly... If I we're looking at the UK, we're definitely doing the UK, and we're going to try and do the US. Uh, as I keep saying, it's very hard to get a visa to the United States. It costs, right? I'm just going to say it. it. I talked to a lawyer, uh, an immigration lawyer from the states. It costs eight thousand dollars to submit the application, not to get it, to maybe get it. Eight thousand dollars, and you might get in. And you guys know, right? How Donald Trump is with immigration. Apparently, talking to this lawyer since he got in, it's gotten ten times harder. So, I might just be throwing eight grand into the fucking bin. But hopefully not, and I can do some fucking shows there. But we'll see. UK, definitely. US, hopefully. Um, And if you're overseas, lewspears.com slash gig list. The the way I'm deciding where to go is whatever city has the most people signed up to the email list because those are people who have said, I want to see you live. I will come if you come. So, um, So if you put your email in, yeah. Um, Where are we? Sell tickets overseas. Where the fuck are we? In my first year of releasing the comedy special, I want to sell 5,000 copies, right? I sold, I sold, just ticked over 10,000 this year, total sold, right? Of Death Threads Don't Scare Me. I reckon with the next one, whatever it's called, I can do 5,000 in the first year. That's my fucking goal. I think that's possible. I'm like three times bigger than I was when I released Death Threats. So I reckon that's the move. Yeah, I think that's achievable. I want to be a guest on a large US comedian's podcast. I'm talking anything over 30,000 views. Could be Joe Rogan. Could be fucking uh, Andrew Schultz's. Could be Andrew Santino. I know him. uh, A bunch of people. Bert Kreischer. I know someone that knows him, anyone, right? Anyone from New York or LA that has like a sizable following, I want a guest on there as a peer. That's a goal. Um, Where else? Uh, I want to weigh 80 kilos. Didn't achieve it last year. Didn't achieve it the year before or the year before that. I'm hoping 2020 is my year. We will see. Fuck. Um, I want to read 52 books. 52 books, that's possible. I've already smashed through three. So, oh, where do you find the time to read? Anytime. When you're on the bus, when you're in bed, when you're walking, this, that, the other. Read your fucking books. It's not that hard, right? 
People think it's hard. People think it's hard to find the time to read. It's not hard to find the time to read. You know what's hard? Reading, right? When you don't read regularly. Whenever I take a break from reading, it honestly takes me like a fucking month to actually get in the rhythm of it. Because you pick up your book and you're like, oh, this is boring. It doesn't have any notifications and sounds. It doesn't vibrate. There's no scrolling. Because you're not getting any of those fucking bullshit McDonald's endorphins that you get from your shit phone. So you look at your book and you're like, oh, this is boring. It doesn't vibrate. Why? How come when I turn the book like this, the screen doesn't rotate? No, this sucks. Right? It's because of your low attention span gifted to you from the power of technology, wasting away our fucking brains. Um, So that's what I'm going for. So really, I'm only going to read 49 books. Um, Where else are we? I want to paint my army and play regularly. I I painted like fucking 20 dudes and then I just stopped because I got too busy and too stressed. So I'm trying to I'm trying to fucking paint my fucking army and then I'm going to expose friendly Geordies as a fucking Warhammer fraud. Friendly fraudies more like I'm calling you out Jordan, right? You fake Warhammer 40,000 fan. He's doing it for the meme. He doesn't like it at all. Doesn't know anything about it, right? I've read 40 books on it. I'm, I'm going to do a video on him calling him a fraud and everyone's going to freak out and click on it and then realize it's about plastic toy soldiers and go, oh, I thought it was about the Labor Party. <laughs> um, put effort into your appearance every day. I used to do this shit. I love looking good, man. I love fucking dressing well and doing my hair and looking after my skin and, and shaving properly. Last year, I didn't do that again because I was so fucking busy. If you watch some of my podcasts, I look like shit, right? I, I reckon I've publicly looked the worst I've ever looked in my life just on YouTube. It's You know what's another thing? Because I'm just filming every day now. Um, I was like, oh, I don't want to fucking do my hair. I'm going to look like garbage. And then you get all these fucking comments from goblins. Like, ah, you look like shit, Lewis. I already know there's some fucking moron writing, oh, but you look like shit all the time. Whatever you do doesn't help. Hey, suck me from the back, cunt. Um, geez, this is an aggressive reading of the goals, isn't it? But if I just read all my goals and I didn't call you guys cunts, you'd probably tune out, wouldn't you, you fucking idiot? Um, uh, and I want to release 12 songs. So those are my goals, man. I think the main the main ones are... Make my comedy special the best show of my life. Um, 800,000 subscribers and uh, sell tickets overseas. Those are the main goals. I think they're all fucking possible as well. So I, I if, if you haven't done uh, goals or if you did them and you've forgotten about them, I implore you, do it. It's f- I think it's fucking great. I think they're really, really good. I think it's, it's, it's a great time to fucking set something that you could achieve or work towards within the next... 365 days I a lot of people don't like them I fucking love them because I think they're a great way to keep track of of what you're doing hold yourself accountable and strive to achieve greater things so if you're a fucking piece of shit write some shit down on a, on, a, on paper and these goals that I'm setting probably sound very intimidating to you I'm I'm eight years in dude eight years in so I started off just you know save two hundred dollars a week Work one day less and make that money back with comedy. You know, I started at the fucking bottom, right? I I didn't come from money. I didn't come from any of this shit. So I think that this is a big reason for my success that I've achieved so far and what I will achieve in the future. I'm also playing with the idea of setting decade goals because I've never been at the start of the decade like an adult. So that could be kind of cool, but we'll see. Who knows? Also, I'm in the 20s again, so um, all you women out there, get back in the kitchen, right? Because it's the 20s now. (laughs) A bit of left of field misogyny there to end off the goals, all right? What else has been happening this week? Um... I got a, I got a, oh, cool, I got an Apple story saga, but I'm going to be honest, I'm saving that gold for the new set. I'm not burning it here. Uh, What else has been happening? Um, oh, that's a good one. You know what? What I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to do... Uh, oh, man, that's what I wanted to talk about. I fucking called it. Or have I already, have I already talked about this? I can't remember if I talked about this. 
I fucking called it. In the new Star Wars, there's a gay kiss and they edit it out. For the Singapore edition and China as well, I believe. And if you notice on the Chinese poster, John Boyega, the black guy, is in the background instead of the foreground. One of the three main characters is relegated to the background because he's black, because Disney wants to make money out of Chinese racists. Isn't that crazy? I love, dude, I fucking love, have you seen what John, that John Boyega cunt's been doing? I fucking love him now. I was never really around his character and I didn't know anything about him because he's like an English actor. I knew nothing about any of those, these new Star Wars dorks, but I love John Boyega now. That guy has been straight up bullying nerds on Twitter and I fucking love that, right? Too many actors, right, get sweet swooped up in their fucking fandom and they think that all they have to do is bend over backwards for these cunts who really didn't do anything for them right all of these star wars nerds think that they made think that they made all these new actors all their millions oh you'd be not nothing you'd be nowhere without us really really you made john boyega did you no Disney made John Boyega. Disney picked up whoever that Ray chick is with the teeth, right? Saw her fucking... Man, she looks like she's got a whole fridge in her mouth. She's going to be the star. I swear they chose her because she has the most beautiful teeth in the world and she doesn't have huge tits. You can't, you can't have huge tits and be in a Disney film. Can't be done. Name a huge... Tittied Disney star. Can't be done. That's why fucking, um, that's why, that's why Lizzie McGuire's coming back. Because when that bitch hit puberty, she didn't grow huge honkers and she didn't turn into Miley Cyrus showing off her pussy everywhere. She just lived a normal life so she can come back to that giant Lizzie McGuire relaunch check. You know, Hannah Montana's not coming back. Uh Uh-uh. Not that Miley needs it to come back because she's probably making much more money, but you know what I'm saying? Not not everyone turns into Miley Cyrus if they're a Disney star. So if you're a Disney star, hey, maybe keep that pussy locked away and you can come back to that big relaunch check, you know? Wizards of Waverly Place. If any of the chicks turn into whores, they're not getting that check <laughs> when they bring that shit back. Um... Yeah, so John, so all these all these fucking Star Wars nerds think that they're the reason why these why these actors are like famous, and it's like no, you don't understand. Disney picked these people, made them, and told you to like them. Disney is the reason why they are successful and why you like it because they have unlimited money to put into the marketing of these fucking films because they don't even need to make a profit on the films. They're just trying to... They're just trying to sell fucking Porg dolls and Ray action figures. (laughs) So John Boyega, right? He finishes Star Wars 1, 2, Star Wars 3. I still haven't seen it. Is anyone else just not uh, fucking excited to see that film at all after the second one? The first one I liked. The first one was like, yeah, they changed a few things, but I can totally get on with like the universe and the characters. I'm I'm on board. I get it. The first movie is always a bit of a setup film, right? The first Lord of the Rings film, it was pretty good. It wasn't like incredible, but it was very good, right? And it led to just greatness with number two and number three. And then they fucked it with The Hobbit, right? But number two and number three some of the best films ever made because they use number one wisely and set up the universe well. That's what they did with Star Wars. And then number two came around with the new director and he was like, hi, I'm the new guy. Uh, I've found the story and look, look at this. And he just shit all over the other guy's vision. Oh, you want Snoke to be the bad guy? He's dead. Oh, you want Kylo and Ren to be enemies? They're friends. Oh, we had the perfect opportunity to kill Leia Organa in a respectful way and then not include her in the third movie because she died halfway through. She's got the force. She's alive. She can breathe in space. Oh, there's there's one fucking chick 
in charge of the ship and her only plan is to is to kamikaze herself into ships even though if that were the most effective option to take down starship cruisers everyone would just aim their ships at the death star and leave it and hyperspeed that shit into it too bad so all i can all i imagine is i still haven't seen it i will see it at some point but all i can imagine is number three is just clean up just the original director being like well this is what i this is kind of what i wanted to do if if you know if all that shit didn't happen and fucking you know yeah there i feel like that's what it's gonna be it's just nah, it's done wrap it up it's over that i feel like that's what the film is like all right well that guy shit on my vision so here's the end and that's what it's gonna be so i'm gonna see it sometime this week um but yeah, John Boyega, right? He, he finished number one, he finished number two, and he finished number three. He cashed his check. He waited for that money to appear in his bank account. And when he saw that cool $100 million hit his fucking bank account, I wonder how much he got paid. I bet I can Google it. How much did John Boyega make from Star Wars? And this is only Star Wars. This is not including endorsements, merchandise, this, that. Star Wars. John Boyega. I don't know if anyone would have made any money after fucking Harrison Ford just sucking up the budget. Love that. Okay. Where are we? It earned $2 billion one out of one of the films. That's fucking crazy. Um, all right. Where are we? Daisy Ridley and John Boyega. That's hilarious. Two newbies signed anywhere from 100000 to 300000 Honestly, you do the first film for free. And then when you go, oh, oh, you want me to complete your trilogy? Ooh, I'm very busy. I'm very busy now. I'm very famous. I've got a fucking... I'm, I'm Daisy Ridley. I've got a Colgate ad to film. I've got the best teeth in the game. I'm busy. You're going to have to cough up. Nah, it's only got fucking money for this. Whatever. They probably made millions. Anyway. Um, so he, he waited for those fucking millions to hit his bank account. And as soon as he saw that money there and he signed off the contracts for like three years of, of future TV and movie work. And he signed off on all of his clothing brand endorsement deals. And he signed off on all of his merchandise deals. And he saw the hundreds of millions coming into his bank account over the next five years. John looked at his phone, opened up Twitter and was like, it's time to bully these fucking nerds and it's been great just watching him bully people and all of these nerds getting fucking angry about it i put a tweet up about it and uh it got like ten thousand retweets and there are so many fucking star wars nerds angry at me because i'm laughing at them and how angry they are that john boyega a black guy from london started acting like a black guy from london talking about fucking ray and that's the best that's exactly what i would do i could do three movies of it in a disney franchise hello i'm i'm using the force i'm a good role model i'm the cash cleared i want to fuck that bitch <laughs> for sure i love that i think that's fucking great he's just been bullying people like some fucking nerd with an anime profile picture tweets him, do you still have a crush on Daisy then? And he just responds with, Star Wars is a movie, not a documentary. Alpha energy right there. Hey, nerd, shut the fuck up. I am not in Star Wars anymore. You know what he's doing? He's cleaning house. He's going, all oh, right, Star Wars is fucking over. I'm not doing any more Star Wars films. I'm trying to move on and progress with my career. I've made my fucking millions from McDonald's. Now I can do some passion projects and do what I actually want to do with my acting career. Time to clean house. Hey, nerds, Star Wars is isn't real and that's all he had to do is just yell about star wars not being real and fucking raise pussy and now he's cleaned house 
It's great. For a man who has been in the biggest franchise of all time, he is not talking about that shit at all because he's trying to move on. And that is how you fucking do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's great. If you're in one of the biggest franchises, if, if you participate in something that is that is and always will be bigger than anything you could create or achieve by yourself, you have to distance the fuck out of yourself from it as soon as you're finished because otherwise you'll just be that guy forever. You know, you don't want to be that cunt. Like, who's one of those those guys? Um, like, Bindi Irwin. She will never not be Steve Irwin's daughter, yeah? Not that, she, not that she wants to break away from it, but imagine if that was a film franchise. She needs to, you know, she needs to stay in there. She's a love... That's a horrible example. Why the fuck did I stay, say her? I should have said someone else from a fucking film franchise, idiot. Where else? Like, you know, Harrison Ford, Yeah? Great example. He did Star Wars. It got huge and he was like, fuck, I need to tie myself into an even bigger franchise, Indiana Jones. And now he's the guy who's done those two things. What else has he done? Name it. You can't. You got to break away, bro. Um, all right. Anyway, that's enough ranting. Time to do miscellaneous bit at the end here, shall we? Uh, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. I'm apologizing for doing it, but I signed a contract when I was young uh, and I have to fulfill it every Sunday. So if you would like to send an email to the podcast, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. If you ask me what the email is on any platform, you're a retard and you will not be answered because I say it every episode. Podcast at lewspears.com. Now I'm saving that one. Um, okay. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Someone emailed me. Uh, hey, Lewis. This is a stupid email. Hey, Lewis, what do you think about the petition to cancel the Sydney fireworks? I think that it's... Oh, this guy... Oh, actually, this is not stupid. He wanted me to talk about it on the podcast. I thought... Oh, this I did something very rude to someone. I thought that this person emailed my contact email, which I only use for fucking business and brand deals and, and touring and shit. And I thought they just... Sometimes I get fucking retarded emails, just questions from cunts. Like, I'm not going to answer... It's like sending me a letter... I am not going to answer an email if you just send me a question. If you send me a question about something that I'm doing, like a question about a show that's reasonable, yeah, I'll answer it. But if you just ask for my opinion on some global Australian political thing to my fucking email, I'm not responding to you because I got better shit to do than talk about some fucking thing a stranger thinks about. So I was very rude to this person. I, I, I must apologize because I did not realize that they sent it to my podcast email. Hi, Lewis. What do you think about the petition to cancel the Sydney fireworks? I think it's stupid to cancel the fireworks because of how much the Australian economy benefits from them. The Sydney fireworks are said to make a profit of $130 million and attract over a billion viewers. That's a lie. The, the, but the profit, maybe a billion viewers? <laughs> no. The budget of fireworks is only $6.5 million compared to the 130 in revenue. People are trying to cancel it so that money can be donated to the farmers and the rural fire, fire service. I don't think people realize that more money could be donated from the profit than from the budget. I think it's stupid that people are trying to cancel the fireworks. And now, uh, because I thought that this was sent to my contact email, I responded with D's nuts. Uh, and that was very rude. And I shouldn't have done that because uh, I now realize that he wanted me to talk about it on the podcast, which I will do so. Oh, yeah. Retarded. That's, I'm sorry. I've said retarded like six times. I don't know why it's in my brain today. I very rarely say that word, but it's in my head today. Um, probably because I'm thinking about me answering this email rudely when I thought it was to a different email, but it was to the podcast one. Uh, that's me, uh, retarded. So um, I think, yeah, cancelling the Sydney fireworks, stupid and obviously impossible. Like they would sign the contracts for that in fucking July. It's not like something they can be like, oh, sorry, we don't want it anymore. And then the firework company that has like $6 million just invested in this fucking thing. Are, oh, okay, no worries. I guess fuck us then. Yeah, stupid. Um, that being said, though, these fires are crazy. You see Scott Morrison trying... There, uh, If you're an international viewer, um, we're having some of the... I think it's the worst fires that Australia has ever had. Is it worse than Black Saturday? I was trying to Google it. I couldn't work out if it was. But it's the, like the worst fires we've ever had. It's like the amount that's burning is is 
fucking insane. Half a billion animals have died. Uh, and like that's 8,000 koalas. Just, it's awful. And our leadership seems to be doing fucking nothing. Scott Morrison, our prime minister, was on holidays while the country was burning. Our, our, emergency, our minister for, emer- for, for disaster or emergencies, I'm an idiot. Our minister for disaster uh, has taken a holiday during a disaster. Um, and he, he had it in his defense. Well, not really. He, it was pre-scheduled. But like, that's like being like, oh, yeah, so um, uh, if there's ever a flood and I need to do my job, I'll be here. Oh, sorry, there was a flood. I booked a holiday, so see you later. Move your holiday, cunt. Uh, Scott Morrison was on holiday during the disaster and then uh, decided not to come home. And it's like, I get it. You know, everybody needs their holidays. But you know what? If you're the fucking prime minister, the leader of a country, if you're the president, let's just say it, you don't get holidays when you're in charge because that's the job, right? Am I insane in thinking that like the, the being the prime minister or the president is an inherently temporary role? No one's prime minister or president, especially forever, hopefully, anyway, right? Trump gets like eight years. And I think that for those eight years, no holidays because after that, you, uh, you, you don't have to work ever, ever again. That's your holiday. You put eight years in, you come out the other end looking like shit, but that's right because you can live an incredible life. Look at look at what Obama looked like when he got out. Looked like a fucking ghoul from Fallout, right? So you go in, you don't have your holidays, you go out and you live your life as a holiday. That's, that's what I think if you're a leader, no holidays. Especially when there's a, one of the biggest national disasters we've ever seen. And it's, it's you know, I think that there's all this fucking shit about that like the global warming thing, which which is yeah, pro- I guess that's true, uh, but I think the main problem is the government stopped backburning. So if you don't know, uh, a really important part of Australia's nature life and the trees is it literally to grow it must burn that's how our trees function you remember the fires in california in la do you know why that happened it's because a lot of the trees they have are australian that's why australian trees to grow must burn it's just how they work it's the cycle that's what aboriginals have been doing intentionally lighting fires so that those fires burn out without being a disaster because if you don't light those fires and burn all of the shit that's on the ground, when it does light up, it's just kindling and it goes fucking crazy, clearly, like it has been. Like, I remember I was a kid and there were backburning trees. I mean, it sent me to hospital because I almost had an asthma attack, but I would say, right, as someone who has been sent to hospital because of backburning trees, I would much rather that than what's happening now the whole country's on fire. It's fucking crazy. I think that's the main thing is that the government just hasn't been burning like they should. Like you should. That's what the Aboriginals have been doing for fucking millions, literally years, is burning shit so that when it does catch on fire, it doesn't turn into an inferno. Like burning is an inevitability in Australia. Unless you cut down all of the trees, shit's going to burn. So we need to burn properly. It's, it's just, it's wild that they stopped doing that. And the Greens Party has a lot to do with that as well. But it's, you know what it is? It's just a combination of everyone not doing anything. It's like the Greens Party trying to protect nature and shit by doing stuff against nature. And then it's also the Liberal Party not wanting to spend money on fucking anything, keeping their surplus for whatever reason. What do we need a surplus for? Like, we need, a, we need to not be in debt, but do we need a giant surplus? I don't know. I'm an idiot. I don't have the, the solutions. What I, would, what I want to know from you guys is uh, I'm going to do something on my YouTube channel um, to raise money, and I want to know um, what is the best charity or organization to give money to because I'm so suspicious of the Red Cross. Like, all those huge fucking giant companies, like... If I give a dollar to the Red Cross, how much of that is going to the fires and how much of that is going to the fucking executives and the marketers and the social media people? I want to give money directly to the problem. How do I do that? Do I give it to the RFS? That seems to be the best option. That's the the volunteer fire service. Um, 
who aren't being paid despite losing their homes and not being able to work because they're fucking heroes fighting these blazers. Good on them. Do we give money to them? Let me know. Comment uh, what 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 is in your opinion the best charity or organization to raise money for and why don't just give me a name tell me why right i'm trying to do my research because i want to raise money i think we could if i if i do a big thing on my youtube i think we could raise a lot of money and the last thing i would want to do is give it to some fucking organization that gets sucked up by administration costs fuck that i want to give it straight to the problem well, not to the problem, right? I don't think the fire needs any more help burning. Um, but I want to give it straight to the solution. So if you can help me help me out with that, let me know. Um, I want to raise some money and, and do something like that. I think I might do like, um, I don't know, like I'll either just do a fundraiser or I'll do something like sales from the comedy special. Go, I'll work something out, something out. I feel like um, a lot of people, I, I might be able to raise more money if I if I do sales from comedy special because then people get something because I feel like a lot of people have already just donated and now if you give them something as well in return for the donation it might work better I'm trying to work out what would be the best solution but let definitely let me know what um, I should give to because and why I need to I need to work that out it's very hard there's so many fucking charities and there's so many fucking scams out there as well which is gross but anyway on that dark note i'm going to leave the end of the podcast please do consider supporting even even if you're an international uh, viewer it's bigger than the fires in the amazon it's worse than that that fucking notre dame fire remember that they got a billion dollars we would love that right burn down a fucking thousand year old church everyone loses their mind fucking an entire country burns not many people give a fuck so not even our own leader. So thanks for listening, guys. Um, uh, do consider supporting um, the uh, R- RFS, the Rural Rural Fire Service, especially in New South Wales. They need our help. And uh, I'm stay, stay tuned for my uh, channel. I'm going to do something. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to do something. And uh, next week on Sunday is going to be the brand new set, brand new thing. Um I was going to say consider supporting me on Patreon, but you know what? Give it to the fireys. They need it more than me. All right? So thank you so much. I'll talk to you next Sunday in the brand new set. Get excited.